Hello, this is Ryan Womack, Data Librarian at Rutgers University Libraries. This is the beginning of a series that we're going to do, uh, broken up in smaller segments on IPMs. IPMs is a very large, very rich data source for census and survey data from around the world, as their website will tell you. We are not going to go into detail into all of these segments. Um, this is introductory, but we want to give you a flavor of what's in IPMs, and in particular, we're going to have demonstrations of how to use IPMs USA, how to use IPMs International. Now, IPMs, let's start with the basics. So, IPMs is pronounced, IPMs, the preferred pronunciation of those who create the project, not IPMs, although no one will um, be too upset if you if you say it that way. Uh, IPMs uh, used to stand for the International Public Use Microdata Series because many government agencies, census, uh, collect these data sets that are released as public use microdata. However, uh, as the IPMS project has expanded, not everything is is public. Not everything is microdata, although that's still the main focus. Uh, it's not quite accurate to call it the public use microdata series, so they're just going by the name IPMS. Um, as you can see from their homepage, they have uh, many very rich projects. So this video is just going to be an overview of what's in here and then the other parts of this series will delve into more detail about how to use the tools particularly in IPMS USA and in IPMS International. So let me just review uh, what these are uh, and I'll also highlight that my colleague at Rutgers Sue Oldenburg will be doing uh, workshops that are focused on the GIS aspects of IPMS. So NHGIS and IHGIS are in particular will be highlighted in a separate series and you'll be able to find those links uh, in the description to this video and also on the library's website. So all the links that we're going to talk about are going to be down below in the YouTube description and you can also visit libguides.rutgers.edu slash data to get those. All right, we're, we're going to kind of zip through uh, the things that we're not going to talk about in detail. That's IPM's higher ed, IPM's health surveys, IPM's time use, and IPM's global health. Also IPM's CPS, current population survey because the remaining four will be topics of detailed review in upcoming videos. So IPMS Higher Ed is a place that you can create an extract from the Scientists and Engineers Statistical Data System, SESTAT. So that's an ongoing survey that reviews the uh, characteristics of STEM graduates um, their early career outcomes. And the, the primary focus of IPMS is to take existing data and make it comparable across time. So if you have ever worked in this domain, you'll know that if the questions change from year to year, if the coding changes from year to year, for example, race in the United States has been subject to many different um, acceptable answers or you know the way that the racial terminology has been coded over time um, if you want to line up data from past years uh, one method is to do it yourself and to go in and say well this is close enough this past variable is equivalent to what I'm looking for in the current year um, I'm going to map those two together create the mapping but IPMS does that for you and so they have done a lot of the hard work and make it made it easy for you to compare things across time. Uh, you should always remember that that's their 
sort of judgment of how they do that. Um, and you might want to be sure you understand that and maybe revisit it. Uh, but it is a great and it is widely accepted and very authoritative uh, common language for interyear comparisons. Um, now, all of these projects will have a similar structure. They'll have a data section where you can get to the data, you can download that material, you can read the documentation, and of course the support. So I'm going to talk a little bit about those sections at the end of this video. Let me continue uh, just describing some of these other segments. Uh, IPM's health surveys, uh, two major health, uh, ongoing health surveys that have been run for a long time, the National Health Interview Survey back to the 1960s and the Medical Expenditure Panel Survey. So Health Interview provides information about actual health status conditions that people suffer. Um, the Medical Expenditure Panel is, uh, if you're looking for anything that has you know, cost of hospital stays, costs of associated with different procedures, this is a great place to look. Uh, that data can sometimes be difficult to, um, to find and work with. But here you can go back to 1996, compare over time, uh, and work with that. So health surveys data, uh, time use data, this is a, the, these studies that we're all talking about right now are all very U.S. focused. These are U.S. official studies. Um, there are the international components, which will be subject to um, future discussion. Uh, IPM's time use uh, is the American Time Use Survey. So this is something that people use for things like, well, how long do you spend commuting? How long do you spend... Um, on different types of leisure activities. How long do you spend at work? There is a survey that addresses these issues and you can track changes over time from 2003. Uh, the American Heritage Time Use, this is a uh, constructed um, series that you know people have gone back and um, collected things that do study time use from 1930 um, and again, a lot of methodological issues about uh, making studies comparable over such a long period of time. And IPMS has done, you know, their very high quality authoritative work to, to do that for you. Um, and the third one here, multinational time use study extract. So there are some international components here. Um, which we can take a look when we browse the data. We can see the countries that are available, uh, several European countries, South Korea, it looks like, well, Canada is not a European country, but Canada, U.S., um, South Korea so far in this in this collection. What you will find if you, if you become an IPUMS, IPUMS user is that you will notice that they're constantly working to expand the data access. So those are the countries that are available now. I have no doubt that they are working at bringing more and more information into this collection. Um, so that's time use. Again, if, if any of these topics grab your interest, the structure will be the same as what we're going to talk about for IPMS USA. Once you learn how to use this source, uh, you'll be well equipped to, to use any of these other studies. So I'm just, again, highlighting them for your uh, potential use. And then there's global health, right? So global health, we have the demographic health surveys and performance monitoring for action. So these are uh, major international efforts um, targeted to measures that are really improve measuring improvement in quality of life or healthcare issues in uh, low-income countries around the world. Uh, as you can see here, 32 African countries, nine Asian countries. Um, 
you'll see this slogan. This is the slogan uh, that you should take to heart when using IPUM's data. Uh, use it for good, never for evil. Uh, this is microdata, so we're going to talk a little bit about what is microdata in just a moment, um, which has potential issues of, you know, you can learn a lot about very uh, localized communities. Ultimately, it is based on individual record data, uh, even though it's not identifiable. Um, so, you know, you should have that in mind and be cautious and um, trying to work with the data in a beneficial way. And IPMs will remind you of that. Uh, finally, we have the Current Population Survey. Current Population Survey is a major census program that really, you know, it supplements the, the um, main census tools that are trying to capture information about everyone uh, by surveying people on specific issues. And that changes over time, but there's some consistency. So this data goes back to 1962, and it includes um, sort of extra topics that they ask about, like employment program participation, um, personal activities like voting or tobacco use, and you, you can see these things here. So um, current population survey is also available through IPMS. All right, so those are the segments that are not going to be covered in depth. Uh, just to repeat, my colleague Sue Oldenburg will be working with IPAM's NHGIS, very wonderful, <laughs> rich source, also of census data, but in geographic formats. Um, we'll touch on it a little bit in this series, and she will be talking about IPAM's IHGS, the international component. These are just wonderful. Uh, I'm not a GIS expert, so my colleague will will bring her expertise to bear on those two. Uh, the second part of this series will talk about IPAMS International, which is international census data, and we'll go into that in the second series. Uh, but today, or for this series, we are focused on IPAMS USA. Okay, so what is IPAMS USA? Um, IPAMS USA is based on the U.S. Census, the decennial census that occurs every 10 years and attempts to provide the most complete population count of the of United States population along with other characteristics. And from 2000 forward, the census has, rather than waiting every 10 years to collect information. They have run the American Community Survey on an annual basis, which s takes a population sample and asks them more detailed questions about their activities. So that's the American Community Survey data from 2000 to the present. So a lot of things that we, uh, when we look back in time, used to be part of the decennial census collection like income or um, other specific, more specific characteristics of people uh, are now moved into the American Community Survey. And the census itself is very basic. Uh, it has uh, race, ethnicity, sex, um, and it's really geared to finding out how many people are living in different places. But you want to compare across time, that, that in itself generates uh, an issue of matching American Community Survey data to older census data. We want to go back to 1980 or earlier. Um, the income information will be in the, the decennial census in a slightly different form. Now, Again, you can do it yourself, or you can use the expert guidance of IPMs in order to do that. Um, so census data, and now we're going to talk a little bit about what the um, microdata aspect of this is. The census data uh, actually attempts to find every single person in the United States. 
and after th there are obvious confidentially confidentiality issues with that so for a, a period of 62 years uh, full census records are not released they're kept private so that we cannot find the names of everyone living at exact addresses and their all the information that they might provide to the census after a certain period of time which i believe is 62 years the that information is made public uh after some period of preparation i believe that right now we're um at the 1940 or 1950 census data has been publicly released in full format and people who like to do genealogy and look up where their grandparents and great grandparents lived um dig into that material uh, but from a statistical numeric data point of view that also uh, becomes useful uh, it's it's its own project to get all that information available and what i want to highlight is that IPAMS has at least through 1840 and this is again something that may continue over time into more recent years so IPAMS goes all the way back to the beginning of the census to 1790 and for 1790 to 1840 you can get what's called full count data which is every single census record so you don't have to think about I'm just working with the sample you can get all of the original data um, and there are issues we're not going to work on examples with this data uh, because it's fairly specialized but you can see from their description we're talking about household level data so you cannot find information about individuals you can find that at this particular address in new jersey um, a family of an adult male adult woman age 40 and 35 uh, had two children age 15 and 10 something like that you, you can find but you cannot find uh, individual level records in this data uh, but it's available so that's something uh, here there's another special um, data set which is the 1850 and 1860 it's called the census of slave inhabitants of course those are enslaved people um, during the time that uh, people were uh, repressed uh, in that way and this uh, is a sample of data that was collected about the enslaved population uh, at that time as of 1850 as of 1860 and you know very specific things were collected um, including uh, demographic information about this, the slaves whether they there were fugitives um, characteristics of the slaves in the terminology of the time you have to keep that in mind um, and also the owners uh, um, so-called owners um, of individuals and that's a special data set that's that's available based on the way the the census was collected at that time so that's another historical tool you may want to be aware of um, going a little bit into the advanced end um, if you are working with restricted data via the federal statistical research data centers uh, there is there are ways to use IPAMS data in combination with other data sets in that environment um, and this sort of leads me into the other general topic that I want to mention before uh, we get to the main event this is all appetizers is the IPAMS people are the experts they are the ones who are constantly working to create and improve and expand this data so I'm offering just a local introduction here for the Rutgers community but the people to contact uh, for detailed questions you can contact IPAMS directly um, you you can there's a forum for user questions and you can you can write directly to them with issues 
I also want to highlight uh, under support, there is a series of video tutorials that are available directly from IPM. So we're going to run through our own version of this. Um, however, um, their tutorials are more authoritative. And of course, as time goes on, you may want to consult the original materials here for updates uh, if this particular video uh, doesn't seem to reflect the current status of IPMs. So there are these online tutorials. There are also um, additional uh, documentation under the FAQs uh, where a lot of specific questions are answered. And so I think now I'm going to try to keep this particular video short and I'll, I'll talk about what is the bulk of the IPMS data, right? So we talked about the special supplemental data, the slave samples, the full count data. I'm not um, going to talk about some of these other things uh, that other projects uh, linking individuals across time so you can actually follow specific individuals across time. There are tons of methodological issues dealing with that, um, which influence how you view that data, uh, not maybe a, a topic for a, a special seminar, not a quick video like this. But we're going to talk about the main data that's available here which is the straight up census data plus American Community Survey data. And we are talking here not about the full count data, but about public use microdata samples, right? So microdata meaning that this is not, when, when we go to data.census.gov um, and we say, show me the population of New Jersey. Zoom in here, right? We get things like this totals 8.8, 8, 8, 8, let me call that 8.9 million, almost rounded up uh, population of New Jersey, according to latest estimates. That's the total, that's aggregate data. The microdata are in data about individuals, right? So, and what we'll have when we see this is we'll see a 1% sample or a 5% sample. Um, they're called, and the ACS has its own sampling methodology where they sample a sufficient amount to get an accurate estimate, um, which may vary a bit depending on the place. Uh, but we go back to old censuses, uh, typically there's a 1% or 5% sample, meaning one out of 100 records are, are randomly chosen and included. Uh, so we don't know, right, if we have 100 people living in one town, uh, one area, one block, one group in New Jersey, uh, one of them has been selected. Overall, that's a representative sample, but we can't you know, say anything specific about, oh, that's the person who lives at number one um, Penny Lane or something like, like that. We, we can't target individuals like that um, based on their characteristics. Again, unless you really, you, 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 you could spot something like that, that, that again, you don't want to violate the confidentiality of anyone, even if you think that you um, have been able to use this data in that way. That's part of the use agreement, which we'll see in a moment. So the 5% sample, obviously one out of 20 people, 10% um, sample was done at one point, one out of 10 people. The larger the sample, the, the, the greater accuracy we can have when we zoom in on smaller geographic areas. But typically, the 1% samples are good enough for state-level, national-level estimates. They may not be good for 
uh, more local estimates. Um, but this allows us to check things like the correlation between income and education or the the correlation between demographic characteristics and other um, you know say housing characteristics or things like that which we can't do with the aggregate data the aggregate data only provides us with the the total so microdata is very important for social science research to get into that cause causality and when we're when we're using IPMs, um, we are we're basically using that micro data. Okay, so this site um, allows you to go in, select variables, create a data extract, download your own data. You can also use cer certain two specific online data tools to do quick analysis online. Um, and so in the remaining parts of this series, we're going to talk about how you get an account to get set up uh, for downloading your data. Um, we're going to run through quickly how to, to use the online tools. And we're going to talk about creating an extract and using it in R as an example, though you can use other statistical software so that you can do your own analysis. So that's what's to come. Uh, this video, again, intended to give you that general introduction to what is in IPMS, uh, and the subsequent videos are going to be linked in the box below and also via the playlist on IPMS. So thanks for listening, and I'll, I'll keep it short and stop here. Uh, waiting for.